Natural gas is the cleanest burning of the fossil fuels. It's a very versatile fuel. People use it for indoor space heating, for cooking and clothes drying and water heating. It uh, has industrial uses, uh, but also you can use it for electricity generation. When we think about the global energy challenge, the dual goals of environmental sustainability and economic development, fuels like natural gas really do provide a pathway to achieving those dual goals. And that's really where LNG stands to provide a massive benefit to societies whose energy thirst is growing rapidly. LNG it really started as a solution to stranded gas in the 70s and 80s when you had oil prices high and you had all this money going into exploration around the world. People were looking for oil and every once in a while they would make these huge gas discoveries. There wasn't a market in a lot of those countries for all this gas. So the question was, you know, what could you do with it? It was clear that the most profitable thing was to, you know, liquefy it and then move it to places like Japan, Korea, and Europe that were energy short but were looking for natural gas or, or cleaner fuels. Liquefaction technology was deployed which cools natural gas to minus 260 degrees and that allows it to then be transported on a ship. What you would look at was, you know, what was the best way to monetize this, this sort of stranded asset. Um, what you had was long-term contracts that were priced against oil. There was some flexibility in those contracts, but not very much. It was sold on a delivered basis, so you bought it from Qatar and Qatar brought it to you, or you bought it from Australian producers and they brought it to you. So it was basically a point-to-point -point business where you bought from a particular producer, they dropped it off, and you really had very little right to do anything else with it, and it was take or pay. So if you didn't need it, you still had to pay for it. So it wasn't really a market. That was pretty much the model up until, you know, the advent of shale in the United States. When U.S. gas came, it could go anywhere. We said there's no need for it to go just to one place and back. Now the U.S. is about to be about 20% of the entire worldwide gas market, and everything is changing. Particularly in North America, you see just about every market permutation of projects uh, being proposed and deployed, all to see what will work best with buyers, what will provide the right amount of flexibility for buyers and for sellers. So that translates into what we call market depth. When you have expanding market depth, it increases the number of trading opportunities that exist. It doesn't necessarily mean that all of those trading opportunities will be exercised, but the fact that those opportunities exist do, by their very nature, change the manner in which transactions are done. And it changes the way we think about not only how trade is occurring, but also how market entry occurs. So do I develop a regasification facility? You know, those sorts of things are very much driven by perceptions around market risk. And the more liquid the LNG market becomes, the deeper the market becomes, the lower the risk associated with entry. So as we've moved forward, we've actually seen pretty aggressive expansion in Australia. We've seen significant growth in the last 15 years from Qatar. We are seeing growth in the United States, and it's occurring in real time. The U.S. getting into the LNG market is going to further stimulate, I think, the evolution of the world LNG market, making LNG much more of a commodity, and that also will further stimulate the development of LNG import facilities and so on around the world. So on the import side, the number of countries that import LNG has tripled in the last several years to at least 42 countries. That includes a number of new-to-market countries such as Pakistan, Kuwait, Jordan, Bangladesh, Panama, Jamaica. And that's important because that's bringing cleaner fuel than what's currently being consumed in many of those countries, coal, LPG, crude oil. 
If you look at what's happened in Europe, in Poland, in Lithuania, and now in Croatia, they've built LNG import terminals, and those are funded by the EU as an insurance policy. If pipeline supplies from Russia or Norway get cut off, you know, they clearly have invested in energy security. I think what you see, though, if you look at developing countries and even industrialized countries, increasingly I think their preference is to try to build renewables first and then to see gas as that bridging fuel and that ability to sort of balance load when your renewables aren't able to produce the kind of electricity that you require. LNG is so important for the global energy future because it provides sustainable balance for every economy's energy mix. It really is so important for an economy to have diversified energy sources. And LNG is doing its part to become the largest and most stable market that it can to provide that reliability. The LNG market of the future is still going to grow by another 20 to 40 percent. And it's going to have a lot more liquidity, meaning LNG will move around the world more easily. It will have to trade on electronic platforms, which we don't do very much today. And it will have to develop price markers that actually give price information to buyers and sellers to move those cargoes around the world. So we will have financial instruments and futures markets, and we don't really have those today. The LNG market is evolving. Some people might characterize it as disruption, but it's more of an evolution. It's moving away from bilateral relationships to one that is much more multilateral. As that evolution continues, you will see more spot trading occur. You will see much more flexibility in long-term contracts. So what's going on in the LNG market is interesting because you have parties on both sides of the ledger that are arguing about the pace of change and whether or not change will occur or is even is occurring. But that's pretty natural when you start thinking about a market that is in the midst of a massive evolution. The LNG market of today does not look like the LNG market of 20 years ago, nor will the LNG market of 20 years from now look like the LNG market of today.